us in the book of Psalm 104, uh, verse number 19. It says, God, you made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knowing or the sun knows when to set. So what is he saying? My children, I place you in this moment of your life to mark that this is the season for you, to mark that I'm getting ready to change it for you, to mark that I'm getting ready to turn it for you, to mark that I'm getting ready to move for you. But he can't move if you don't believe him yourself. I can believe God for you. She can believe God for you. He can believe God for you. Everybody can believe God for you. But are you going to believe God for yourself? Because other people's faith comes and goes, but you got to know how to believe for yourself. You got to believe him. You got to trust him. You got to believe him. And the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us that now Jesus comes out of Jericho. He's now entering now and on the road and on a journey with his disciples and a great multitude is following him. And then a blind man named Bartimaeus shows up. Now, the Bible says that he came across Bartimaeus. Now, first thing first, I want to talk about blindness. Somebody that is blind, we know, is a person who cannot naturally see. But God has spoke some things to me, and he told me to tell the church that there's a lot of people in this room right now because of the dark moment you're in. It's hard for you to see right now. Because of the dark circumstances you have been dealing with, it's hard for you to see right now. Because of the darkness that's going on in your household, it's hard for you to see right now. Because of the things that people did to you. Now, one of the things I come to realize is that, that, that there's many reasons or ways that a person either is born blind or experience blindness in the future. Number one is because a child is born blind because there had to be some kind of traumatic experience during childbirth or when the child was born, he was born or she was born dealing with some kind of a sickness or passing through some kind of sickness and disease. Somebody got a plague in here. Somebody put something on you that you just can't handle right now, and it's hard for you to see where you're going, and it's hard for you to get where you need to go. Hallelujah. Now, another research study shows that, that people also experience blindness because they had some kind of tragic accident, a head, or head situation where they dealt with head trauma. Somebody mentally, you're not here. Talk to me, Holy Ghost. Somebody mentally, you are somewhere else. You're in the building, but your mind is on something else. You're in the building right now, but your mind is thinking about somebody else. Y'all don't hear me. You're in the building, but I, I hear you, Pastor, and I need a word from God, but my mind is on my bills, and my bills are on my mind. I, I hear what you're saying today. I came in because I need God to do something for me, but my mind is everywhere, and these thoughts, these imaginations, these situations, these circumstances seem so dark that I just can't see my way through this. For the Bible teaches that the name Bartimaeus means son of uncleanness, in which the name Timaeus means uncleanness, in which this young Bartimaeus or this Bartimaeus was born through something that is unclean. Somebody experienced something unclean that has been clouding your vision, your judgment. You said, Pastor, what do you mean I have experienced something unclean? Somebody has been experiencing something, some kind of a hurt, some kind of affliction, some kind of situation, some kind of circumstance that came up and rose up in your life. Somebody has experienced something that is beyond your own control. And some of us have experienced something that was in our control, but we chose not to handle it the right way. Can I talk? Somebody went through something that made you sick and tired and has caused you uh, to be put in a place where now you cannot see clear. You have lost vision of who you are. You have lost the vision of who people really are. You have lost the vision of how great people can really be. We have gone through these cycles in our lives and have dealt with these dark moments, have dealt with these experiences. We've dealt with it, and I like this liking that now. Watch this. He says, son of Timaeus, in which I'm going to connect it to relationship. Somebody is in this building dealing with something in your relationship. It can be from family history. It can be right now today dealing with something among your household, your children, your spouse. You can be dealing with something right now, and it's hard for you to get out of that box. But I'm here to tell you that there is a light in the darkness. There is a light that has shown up. And the Bible says that this blind Bartimaeus, blind son of Timaeus, he sat by the road, by the the road, not on the road, but by the road. 
somebody in this building is sitting by your purpose. Somebody in this building right now, because of financial situations, you're sitting by your destiny. Somebody in the room right now, you're sitting by the promise, but it's hard for you to walk in your promise. It's hard for you to see the value of who you are and to see the value of what's in front of you because I am blinded by what's going on in my life. I am blinded by the experiences that I have dealt with over these last couple of seasons. I am blinded by the things that people did to me. I am blinded by the way people look at me. I am blinded by the way people have treated me over the years. And because I have been blinded by these circumstances, I'm sitting by the road begging for somebody to accept me. Begging for somebody to help me. Begging for somebody to see the value in me. Begging for somebody to reach down and to carry me along the way. Begging for somebody to see the hurt and the pain that I'm dealing with every day. Begging for what other people have but I feel that I cannot obtain it myself. It's hard for me to get it for myself because I'm looking at everybody or I'm seeing in spirit everybody else's stuff and, and therefore I'm in a place where I feel like I cannot obtain. Somebody in this, in this building feel like it's hard for you to obtain what God has for you but God is telling you today that I'm getting ready to change your situation and change your circumstance and remove whatever it is that is hindering you. The Bible says that blind Bartimaeus sat by the road, not on the road but by his purpose of by the road and he sat by the road and he was begging and while he was begging the Bible declares and tells us that he heard touch somebody and say neighbor have you heard something new today yeah see see the thing is you might not be able to see but can you listen uh, I can't see my way out of this problem but I got ears to hear I, I can't see my way out of this darkness but I can hear see one of the things I know to be a fact uh, that even though someone naturally cannot see they can hear and if they're able to hear touch somebody say neighbor if you're able to hear you can hear the voice and the voice can now lead you where you need to go. Do I have a witness in this house? For my Bible says, it says, and when he heard, when he caught uh, understanding when he caught a revelation when he caught what God had he said he heard they said he heard that Jesus of Nazareth stop there Jesus meaning the salvation God is my salvation of Nazareth basically mean he came through the worst place you can name now touch somebody and say he's been there and he's done that so we know that we serve a God who's been through for me huh? we know we serve a God who died and was beaten for me we know we serve a God who took punishment for me and it says he heard that Jesus of Nazareth began then when he heard that he was in town he began to cry out now this is the problem with us when the Holy Ghost start moving we get quiet instead of crying out you see the spirit moving in the atmosphere, but instead of praising, I sit there with an attitude. We see the spirit shaking the foundation. The praisers are ushering us into the glory, but instead of us getting in and crying out and seeking after God, over there, I was sitting over there and I said, God, I'm going to cry out today. I, I can't just sit in here, all this glory in here. I can't sit in here and just look around at the audience and sit around here looking at people's faces and sit around here thinking about my situation. I can't sit here and go through uh, and the devil is a liar the glory has come into the building and I have to cry out so he cried out for the word cry out means to wail the word cry out means to shout the word cry out means to yell but the word cry out means to give a praise so loud that it make your enemies mad uh, he cried out and begin to say, Jesus, son of David. And I love that because he said, Jesus, meaning you are the Savior. Jesus, meaning you are the son of David. When you call him the son of David, 
The Bible teaches in the book of Psalm 89, 3 and 4, the Bible talks about how the children are the sons of David, will always reign on the throne of David. And the reason why they will reign on the throne of David is because Jesus is the ultimate ruler that will be born or birthed through David's lineage. In which when he said son of David, he said you are the savior and you are the one who reigns. You are the savior and you are the one who rules. You are the savior and you are the one who owns it you are the savior and you are the one that can change my situation he said Jesus son of David have mercy on me show me compassion show me pity this morning show me an act of kindness even though I am born from a man who's unclean show me mercy even though I'm in the midst of a family that is going through some unclean situations have mercy begged everybody and nobody stopped as a matter of fact, when he started crying out to Jesus, the next verse says that when he called out the very people he was asking for help, they were so mean, they told him to be quiet. Don't you let nobody tell you to stop praising God. He said, be quiet. You're too loud. Be quiet. You praise too much much. Be quiet. Now, now sometimes it's people that will try to get in your ear and say, be quiet. But here's the truth. Sometimes, sometimes it's your own thoughts uh -huh. that's trying to tell you stop screaming out so much. It ain't working. Won't you stop praying about this situation so many times? It ain't gonna change. Won't you stop praying for him? He ain't gonna never get it. Won't you stop praying for her? Don't always be disrespectful. Won't you stop praying for those kids? They ain't gonna never change. Won't you stop? You need to just be quiet. You need to stop shouting over this. You need to stop praising over this. How can you shout at a time like this? You can't even see. Why are you opening your mouth and nobody looking at you. Nobody's even listening to you. And they don't just be quiet. And the Bible said that when they told him to zip it, he opened his mouth and he let it loose even louder. Slap two or three high five and say when the devil tell you to be quiet, that's your moment to open up your mouth and get louder. When the devil tell you to quit on her, that's the moment where you open your mouth and say, we shall live and not die. When the devil tell you to get a divorce, that's when you love even harder. I need somebody that got some words for the devil to lift your voice and say, devil, I shall not quit. So he cried loud. Change me. Lord, I called on everybody and nobody got compassion. Everybody's so mean. I asked for help from her and she looked at me like I was nothing. I begged him to support me and my best friend turned on me. They all told me to stop talking. They told me to give up on my dreams. Give up on my purpose. Give up on my destiny. They sat me by the road and never put me on the road. And so I've been stuck here on the side of the road. How long have you been on the side of the road? How long have you been on the side of the road? Can't see it but hearing about what everybody else is getting from God. What everybody else is experiencing. You heard she got a breakthrough. You heard he got delivered. You heard they got a new house. You heard she driving another car. You heard that God saved him but you did not experience it yet but when he heard that Jesus was on the move he said no 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 this is my moment y'all better get up out my way y'all better stop playing up in here with me I got a praise on my lips so he cried out have mercy they said be quiet he got louder they said stop he got louder they said don't he said yeah I'm gonna give God all I got so he cried out louder and it says he cried out even the more Lord have mercy on me <laughs> to the point to where while Jesus was hi you little sheep 
my children, I love you. Have mercy on me. How you doing? Oh, God bless you. Lord! It got so loud that it caused him to stop. Slap two or three high five and say, neighbor, don't miss this opportunity. There is a praise you can render that will stop God in his tracks to stop and see about you, to come right to you and say, what do you want from me? There is a worship that you can utter out of your belly that will literally, while God is on the move, God moved for him, God moved for her, God moved for her, and there's a shout you can get that while he's getting ready to move here, he go, wait a minute. And he stopped. The Bible said he stood still. And he turned back to see who's calling me. And the Bible says that all them haters that were saying be quiet. You know why they were saying be quiet? Not only because, not only because they probably didn't like him and he was just loud and they looked at him funny, but, but they said be quiet because they probably were spiritually selfish. They want all the blessings for them. You know, there's some people that can be in your life that just want all the miracles for them. They, they just want all the blessings for them. They only get happy when it's for them. They, they only get excited. You don't hear me? But, but watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. But this group, and there is a certain type of group that will hate on you until you get blessed. <laughs> when you ain't got nothing... <laughs> they telling you to be quiet. When you ain't got nothing, they looking at you funny. When you ain't got a dime to your name, they don't even call you. But as soon as Jesus stopped for you, now all of a sudden they're your best friend. For the Bible says the same group turn right around and say, hey, be of good cheer. He's calling you. So now all of a sudden you want to be my friend now. Now, now. now you want to cheer me up? When I didn't have a dime, you didn't even look at me. When I couldn't make it, you didn't look at me. While I was sitting there trying to figure out life, you wouldn't look at me. But when God stopped for me, now you all of a sudden got words of encouragement. They said, be of good cheer. He's calling you. And the Bible says that Jesus went over to him and he asked him a question in which I want you to turn to your neighbor real quick and ask him, say, what do you want from him? He can't do nothing for somebody that don't have a desire for him to do something. You can praise him all loud if you want to, shout and dance and flip-flop, do bunny hops and everything else. But if you don't have something you are expecting him to do, then he's going to stop, look at you, and say, what do you want? See, he's asking you this because he wants you to search a little deeper. He said, what do you want from me? What do you, now, it's not like God don't know what he needs. He's Jesus. He already knew what he needed. But he wanted to hear his mouth say what he needed. God knows what you need. He know who you need. He know the doors he want to open. He know the choices he going to make for you. But he's waiting on you to stop having pity parties, stop seeking everybody else approval, and say to God, this is what I need from you. So I answered him and said, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? He says, Rabboni, in which that word rabbi is, rabbi means great teacher, great teacher. Touch somebody and say, let him teach you, let him teach you. He'll teach you how to live this life. Let him teach you. He'll teach you how to walk by faith. Let him teach you. He'll teach you how to live and be blessed. Let him teach you. He said, Rabbi, that I may receive my sight. I want to receive something from you. I want to have vision like never before. I want to see people the way you see them. I want to see deliverance. I want, I'm ready to get this drama out of my life so that I can see the glory, the experience, the glory, and the salvation of the Lord. He said, I have I see and receive my sight. And he didn't say it in a sorry way. But not only, hey, watch this. Not only did he say, I want to receive my sight, but there's a part I can't miss. I can't miss this part. There's a part where it says, when he came up to Jesus, he tossed his garment aside. Slap somebody high five and say, get rid of the garment. 
Now, now, if you need any Bible, any Bible research, you would find that that garment that he was wearing was to show that he was sick. People that were sick, lame, maimed, blind, things like that, they had to wear a certain type of clothing so that people can identify their situation. Oh, yeah. He's God is getting ready to do something so big for his people in such a way that people will not even be able to identify you anymore. Every time they saw you, they know you as being sick. Every time they recognized you, they knew you as being broke. Every time they knew you, they knew you as a beggar but the next time they see you they gonna see you without your begging garments without your sickly garments without your blinded garments and they gonna see you with a different garment touch two or three in here and say neighbor get rid of the garments so he threw them garments Jesus said what do you want from me he said I want my sight and as he spoke this, as he spoke this, as he said, Lord, I want my sight back. Please give me my, I want the sight. He says, don't worry now. Don't be afraid. Oh, turn to your neighbor. Grab him by the hand and say, don't be afraid. Uh, don't be afraid because the light that shines in darkness has showed up for you. And he said, don't be afraid. I know it's hard for you to see your way through, but don't be afraid. I know it's a challenge for you to see your way out of it, but don't be afraid. Jesus said, don't be afraid. But a key word, he says, he says, he says, your faith, not her faith, hear this, not their faith for you, your faith, not your sister's faith, not parents' faith, not your spouse's faith for you. He said, but your faith. And you say, well, how did I know he had faith? Faith number one, lesson number one. He shouted when people told him to stop. See, that shows you got faith. I ain't going to stop till I get a breakthrough. How did I know this man had faith? Not only did he shout through the mess, but he took his garments off when he got cold. That shows I got faith. That's like somebody walking with a cane, and when Jesus said, come on, they throw the cane. I don't need it no more. I don't need it anymore. I've got faith enough to believe that this is my season, that God is going to open the door. I ain't got to go through it no more. I don't need it no more. God. I don't need these garments, and I'm not going to stop shouting. I still got a praise on my lips, and I believe God. So Jesus said, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. Your faith. <laughs> your faith has made you well. And I love the part he says now. Go your way. Slap somebody high five and say, neighbor, it's time to stop going people's way. Waiting for people to take you their way. It's time to stop trying to mimic everybody else. It's time for you to be yourself. Now that you got the blindness off of you, now that you can see clearly now, now that you can see your way out, go your way now. Be the best you that God has called you to be. Go away. Do you not know that there is a way that he's called you to walk down? You, that's why, that, that's why you can't be like everybody else. You got to be who God called you to be. You got to go your way. He said, go your way because your faith has made you well. So Jesus said, go to your way. Your faith has made you well and what? Immediately. Slap somebody high five and say, it's happened quickly. It's going to happen quickly. As quick as you can believe it, God's moving it. See, see, oh, hey, 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 hey. See, you got to understand creation takes time. Creation takes time. As soon as you believe, it happens immediate in the spirit realm. 
as soon as you believe, I'm healed. That healing, believe it or not, has been deposited in your spirit. But it's going to take some time to work what's in your spirit into your soul and take it out of your soul to make it in happen in your body. So you got to believe God and get it in the spirit because as soon as he caught it in spirit, his body was healed. I need somebody in the church that want to be healed from your struggle, healed from your pain, healed from your hurt, healed from your sickness, healed from what papa, mama, exes, anybody else, what they did to you. If you want to be healed, jump up on your feet, give God a praise and shout my faith has made me well. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout I believe. Shout I believe. Shout I believe. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to worship. I dare you to thank him. I dare you to give him up. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. If you walk in it, Tina, you'll defeat it. If you walk in it, mother, you will defeat it. If you walk in it. Somebody call on the name of the Lord. Somebody call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Ah! Oh. Look at that. It happens. See, when you talk about sundown, darkness, you know, darkness has stages. Okay? It has stages. It's that first stage of darkness where it's not as bad. But then it's that second stage where it seems like it's getting worse. But there's a third stage of darkness that it seems like, we, this is what we call, we call it the midnight hour experience. We call it like it's the darkest of the dark. It's the worst of the worst. It's, it's, the, it's the hardest of the hard. It's, it's, it's the moment where I feel like there is no light gonna shine. But one of the things I come to realize about midnight is though it might outside be the darkest moment outside, it is actually the beginning of a new rise. Because midnight is not 12 p.m. in the sense of 12 p.m. darkness is 12 a.m., which means it's the beginning of a new morning, the beginning of the sunrise, the beginning of a new thing, the beginning of change. So though you might feel it's the darkest moment, it is actually the beginning of your greatest moment. Somebody give him praise. So, watch this. So immediately he receives his sight. Now, he didn't just get a breakthrough and sit there. This is the problem with us. We get breakthroughs and then we stay in the same spot. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Don't get your breakthrough and choose to stay in the same rut. Do not get a breakthrough and still choose to hang out with the same crowd. Uh-huh. You, you, you can't get the breakthrough, receive your sight, and still be sitting around here like you in the same box. When you get it, get up, get on the road to purpose, and follow Jesus. <laughs> And Jesus led him uh, right into his purpose, uh, right into his destiny, uh, right into his calling, uh, right into his healing. Uh, touch two or three and say, neighbor, uh, it's time to follow what God told you to do and stop sitting there and letting the enemy keep you bound. Give God some real praise right now. Give him some worship. So... In closing, this is how it works. This is how it works. This is how it works. You have to believe God. Because the people next to you, they're not going to take you anywhere without God telling them to do it. But you cannot place your hope in an individual. He was sitting on the wayside, on the roadside, begging people people I'm gonna say that again begging 
people. And people, because everybody got their own thing going on. Let's just talk. Because everybody's so busy. <laughs> because everybody's out to get their own miracles. I found that a lot of, a lot of people nowadays don't even have time to pray for each other no more. Uh-huh. But Jesus start moving. And I love this. Watch this. Catch this. This is a revelation. Catch this. What God did for him changed the attitude of the people. You ready? What God is doing for you is getting ready to change the attitude of the folks around you. The ones around you are going to be moved by what God has done in you. Oh, I felt that all by myself. Somebody better give him a shout right now. I dare you to give him 30 seconds of real cheering and praise because he said, what I've done for you is going to change the attitude. Look at this. Watch this. Somebody going to go home and their husband going to be changed because of what God did for them in this service. Somebody going to go home and their wife is going to look at them differently because of what God did for them in this service. Somebody going to go home and their children going to act different because of what God did for you in this service. Somebody going to go back to work and your boss going to treat you different because of what God did for you in this service. Somebody going to go out here and get out in the world and God is going to use what he did for you to change the life of somebody else. I dare you to give him some worship by crying out tell him thank you stop two or three high five matter of fact right, this way we're gonna do something we're gonna close right quick we're gonna close but i want to do something this is this is what i call pass the blessing I, I want you to turn and slap somebody high five and then turn and slap the other person next to you just pass it pass it pass it tell them the blessings are being passed the miracle is being passed what god has done for me he's doing it for you what god has done for me he's passing it to you god is changing this room god is changing the atmosphere now give god a real worship and a real praise out of your belly pass the blessing, pass the blessing, pass the healing. Give him some worship. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. As we get ready to close, everybody's standing, everybody's hands lifted to God. Everybody's heart open as we begin to close. I would ask you the question today. What, who happened to you that has caused you to feel this blindness you've been dealing with? Because blindness will cause you not to not only be able to see for yourself but a blindness will cause you to not be able to see the value of the friends and the relationships and the family that God has placed you in blindness will cause you to see things in utter darkness Oh, ah. because somebody that cannot see all they see is darkness because it's black they see darkness and from testimonies I've heard they see shadows in which God is saying, I don't want you to see the shadow anymore. I don't want you to see nothing but darkness anymore. But what I want you to see now is people for who they are really worth. Uh -huh. And I want you to see your marriage for what it's really worth. And I want you to see your children for who they are really worth. And I want you to see your parents for who they are really worth. And I want you to see yourself for who you are really worth. I don't want you to see yourself through the eyes of insecurity anymore. But I want you to see yourself as a precious jewel that is so worth and so precious that it took life, it took Jesus' life to save you. He died for you because you're so precious to him. 
And so if there's anybody in this room that want the blindness to be removed from your soul, I want you to meet me at this altar right now. You said, I want to see people the right way. I want to see them through the eyes of love, not through hate anymore. I want to see them through the eyes of compassion, not through anger anymore. I want to see people through the eyes of, of peace now instead of seeing people all chaotic. I, I want to see different. I, I want to see clearly. I want you to come to him right now. Somebody might need to be saved. Come down here and get your salvation. Somebody need to be resurrected in your heart. Come down. Come down. Come on. Don't let the enemy stop you. Come on. Your faith this morning is going to make you well. Your faith. Your faith. Somebody, anxiety has been blinding you. Somebody else, fear has been blinding you. Depression has been blinding you. Hatred has been blinding you. Animosity has been blinding you. And God is saying, come and receive your sight. Come on. Unbelief has been blinding you. Come and receive your sight. Come on. Receive it. Receive it. Sickness has been blinding you. Come and let God release you from the fear and from the worry and from the unforgiveness. Somebody got unforgiveness and it's blinding you. Receive your sight. Thank you, Lord. Stretch your hands toward the altar. Those of you at the altar, lift your hands to Jesus. And I want you to say this prayer with me. Because the first step of receiving your sight is to pray the prayer of repentance, salvation, and rededication. So I want you to say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins as I forgive everyone who've hurt me. I release them. I place them into your hands. Thank you, Jesus. I am free. Thank you, Jesus, that I am healed. Come into my heart. Save my soul. Empower me with your Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, love through me. Holy Spirit, minister to me. Holy Spirit, restore my sight. Restore my vision. Restore my focus in the name of Jesus. Now say, Satan, I drive you out. I belong to Jesus. You have no authority, devil. Loose my life. Loose my life. Loose my life in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree, Father God, that because of your faith, your words, God, you said our faith is made as well, Father, because of my brother and my sister's faith. They are made whole. They're made whole. They're made whole. Mentally, they are sound. Emotionally, they are stable. Spiritually, they are strong. I speak it, God. Physically, they have been recovered. Even in this moment, God, the healing has began. The healing has began. I decree it, Father. I decree it, Father, in the name of Jesus. And it is so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now what I want you to do is some of you might say, you know, I still, I still need to touch and agree a little deeper. I, I need some hands laid on me. And, and if that's you, I want you to stay right here at this altar. If you need somebody to pray with you, a minister, the pastors to pray with you, I want you to stay right here. Stay with me at this altar. But if you do not need any additional worship and prayer, you may go back to your seats. But if you need prayer, stay right here. Stay right here. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stay right here. Stay right here. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. Go ahead. While you're standing in the audience, we're going to dismiss the audience. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Devil. Thank you, Jesus. Now, some of you in the audience, you might say, I need prayer. I'm saved, Pastor, but I need some prayer. I need additional prayer. 
And if you need prayer, then I want you to come to the middle aisle as we get ready to dismiss so that you can receive prayer. Also, I want to once again invite you. I want to invite you to come out. This Friday is our new members class. This Saturday um, is our, um, our special meeting this Saturday at 10. New members is Friday night at 7. The special meeting is at 10 o'clock on Saturday. Come on out to those meetings, amen. Come on out and be a part of that. If you would like to join the church on your way out, our ushers will give you, our greeters will give you a membership card, and we will formally greet and meet and connect with you at the new members class, amen. So please make sure you do that as well. One thing I want you to know this is that if you believe God, your sight has been restored to you. If you have faith today, your faith has made you well in Jesus' name. Let's pray out. Father, we thank you for grace. As we leave the building but not your presence, lead and guide, direct our path. We thank you for the true word, your word, which is living. Your word said, our faith has made us well. So we thank you that we walk out of this building sound and well, that the recovery has begun in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hug your brother and sister on the way out. God bless you. Thanks for coming to the 9 a.m. service.